What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to professionally generate fake sample data in python so let us get right into it all right so what does it even mean to professionally generate fake sample data essentially it means that we're not going to do it ourselves we're going to use a library that does it for us in a professional way which means that we can do some more advanced random generation than if we were to just go ahead and for example, if we want to generate a random name, take a file full of names and then pick one and then combine it with a last name, it makes more sense to use a professional library that can do it for a certain country, for example, in combination with a certain address. And besides that, we have way more possibilities because let's say now I want to generate a random name of a person, a random uh, street address of a person, and then also a random IPv4 address, a, a public one or a private one, whatever. Um, what I have to do now is I have to write, first of all, I have to have a text file full of names that I can choose from, then I have to do a random choice. Then for the address, I have to pick a street with a number that goes with that street with a country that um, suits or that that is compatible with that street. And for the IPv4 address, I need to specify uh, a certain pattern with a max number with a random generation with certain IP ranges not being available and so on. Instead of doing all that, I can just use the Python library called Faker. And this Faker library is essentially an external library that allows us to do this professionally. And this is what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to start by installing it, opening up the command line and typing, uh, typing pip install faker like that. And then we can just go ahead and say from faker import faker with a capital F. And now what we do is we create an instance of that faker. So we say F equals faker, for example, I think in a documentation, the convention is to use fake or something. Um, but I don't want to use fake because it's actually faker and I don't want to use faker because that's already the name of the module. So we're going to just use F. Um, and essentially what we can do now easily is we can go ahead and say print F dot name or print F dot address like that. And then we get some randomly generated address, some randomly generated name. And we can do that with a bunch of different functions for a bunch of different use cases. Now, I'm not going to go through all of them because the point of this video is not to show you every single function in that library. For that, we have a documentation. Uh, but I want to show you today in this video specifically a couple of those functions. I want to show you how to use some more complex functions. And then I also want to talk a little bit about the providers, uh, how you can make your own custom random generation of sample data. And we're going to start with some basic functions here. So name address is one of them, or are two of them. Uh, then we have IPv4. Um, we need to be careful here because the auto completion doesn't suggest this already. So IPv4 private, IPv4 public. And based on that, we get different IP addresses. So the private is 192 because that's uh, 192.168 is a private IP range or a start of the private IP address and this one is public. So we can do it over and over again. Um, there you go. You can see here that sometimes we get 172. Sometimes we get 192. I'm sure we should also get 10 point something. Maybe not. Oh, there you go. 10 point something. Um, so we can also get those IP addresses here. And now let's do a couple more examples here. And then I'm going to show you something quite interesting, quite cool. We have sentence, we have a zip code. We have, um, what do we have? We have locale, basically offering languages in settings. Then we have license plate, which can be quite interesting license underscore plate. And then we have something like phone number and a bunch of more that I'm not going to talk about now. So just run this. And you can see we got a bunch of different um, randomly generated values here that are from the respect uh, respective category. And I can run this over and over again, I'm going to get different data. And this is how we can fill up, for example, a database with fake data. So the interesting thing now, this is really interesting, in my opinion, is that we can go ahead now and target all of this here to a certain country. Now, not all of them are going to be available. So I think license plate, for example, or phone number or also zip code are not available for all countries. But what we can do here is when we create faker, we can pass a list. And in that list, for example, we can pass de underscore de for Germany. So German, Germany, 
Alternatively, we could also have German and Austria. So AT, but let's start with DEDE. -D -E. And then if I run this, not all of those functions are available, as I said. So for example, zip code doesn't work here. Let's comment that out. But besides that, we have here a German name with a German street. Now, I'm not sure if that street really exists. I don't know about this, um, but it could exist or it could just be an authentic sounding street name. Then we have a zip code with, um, I don't know, a city or something or a village. Then we have IP addresses. Now, I'm not sure if the IP addresses are actually targeted towards the region. I don't think so. So I don't think that this is necessarily a German IP address. But if you want, you can check it out online. And if it is, that's even more impressing. Um, then here we have a sentence, even though I as a German speaker can tell you that this doesn't make a lot of sense, basically says uh, memorize monkey student. Uh, okay, I don't know what that means. And then we have uh, a locale. And we have a license plate and we have a phone number, which is actually a German phone number. Now we can switch this up to DEAT. And now we're going to get Austrian values. So those are still German because in Austria, we speak German. But those are now actually Austrian um, regions, Austrian, uh, more Austrian names, even though German Austrian names are quite similar. We have, um, I don't think we have a phone number, though, do we? Because that's not a phone number. Okay, I mean, that's at least an odd phone number, we don't have a mobile phone number. Plus one is also not Austria, I think. Okay, so maybe it doesn't work that well for Austria in this case. Um, but we can do that with all sorts of regions. So we can go with uh, England, so English and then uh, UK, I think UK should be the proper thing here. Um, we can go with FRFR for France and so on and so forth. So this is quite interesting. And one thing that we can also do here, sometimes we might want to have different, um, different uh, regions, but also multiple regions. So so we don't want to have all of them, but we want to have multiple of them. So for example, French and German, Germany. In this case, sometimes we would get the French, sometimes we would get the German. And this is actually quite interesting. Um, I, I'm not sure if we get the proper combination every time. So everything French or everything German. Uh, no, we don't because here now this is German, this is German and this is French. Um, but yeah, this might make more sense if we go with German German uh, or German Germany, German Austria or something like that. But this is those are the very, very basics of the faker idea here of the faker library, we can just go ahead, create a faker object, pass a language or a region or whatever. And then we can generate all sorts of random sample data for different categories. All right, now let us move on to some more advanced functions. I'm going to get rid of all this here. And we're going to start by talking about the unique function. And the unique function is actually quite telling already the name is quite telling already, we're going to generate unique values in a sequence. So we're going to have a simple loop, for example, for placeholder in range 10, and we're going to generate 10 random values. But those 10 random values are going to have a range, a minimum and a maximum, let's say, for example, one is the minimum number, and 10 is the maximum number. And the difference here between that unique function that we're going to talk about, and uh, the just core Python random rand in function is that the rand in function can generate values like two, three, five, one, and then another five, even though we had a five already. And here, we're going to get a unique sequence. So each element is just going to occur once. And we can do it like that, we can say f dot unique, and then random underscore in, for example. Uh, so unique is, uh, is a sub category. And then we have the random in function, for example, and we can say min equals one max equals 10. And in this case, we would get then the values from one to 10 in, um, in order in, in, a, in a random order, but we won't have any element twice, no matter how often we run it. Now, if we for some reason, exceed the capacity. So if I say minimum one, maximum five, and I want to have 10 values, it's going to give me an exception, uniqueness exception, because we cannot have enough, we don't have enough values to fulfill the requirement of 10 unique values. This is just a side function here. Um, a more interesting function, in my opinion, is the both of five function, I'm not even sure why it's called that, but we can do something like for placeholder in range five, and then we can do print f dot both of phi. And the most basic uh, way to use that function is you provide, for example, uh, certain letters like that. 
A, B, C, D, E, F, G, for example, and then we run this and you can see that we always get um, like like values and then and then we pick from those um, uh, we, we pick from the letters, then also uh, two. So two of those letters doesn't have to be unique and we pick them. However, this is quite random here. Why do we generate two two digits and then two letters? A more reasonable way to do that is to specify a text as well. So we can specify a text here. And then we also have the letters and in that text, we can define certain placeholders. So let's say you have a company and in your company or in your project in your software as a service, whatever you're building, that you want to fill up with random values, you have certain codes that are unique to your specific program. And in those codes, you have, for example, uh, I don't know, four letters, and then a couple of digits, and then two letters in the end, or something like that. What you can do here, instead of writing your own custom generation functions, you can do something like uh, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, which will um, give you four places to pick some of those letters. So you can specify whatever you want here. So let's specify ABC XYZ, for example, and then a dash. And then for example, hashtag, 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 and then four more of those and hashtags are filled with digits. So what the both if I function will do is it will fill all the question marks with letters from the letters list here, and it will fill all the uh, hashtags with digits. And then we can do two more question marks here. And you will see that it generates codes like that. So that's a quite useful function. Um, and one more thing that I want to show you here is the hexify function, which can be quite useful uh, for specific use cases as well. I think this is an example that I took from the documentation directly to generate Mac addresses. Now Mac addresses have a certain, um, a certain pattern, they have essentially um, a hex digit, you could say so anything from zero to F. Um, and they have two of those in a row. So let me just did I have caps lock? No, there you go. Uh, so we have two hex digits separated by a colon from the next two hex digits, colon, hex digits, colon, and so on. And we do that until we have six pairs. So we have four now, two more, there you go. That is the structure of a Mac address. Now we don't need the letters here. What I can do now is I can just hexify this. And it will then generate random, um, random Mac addresses. And I can also go ahead and specify here for the sake of um, generation here, upper equals true. <clears throat> and then we get actually what Mac addresses look like. And you don't have to do it in the Mac address format, you can also do it like that if you want to, if you're fancy, and you can also add, for example, a dash in here, it will fill up all these uh, hats with uh, hex digits, essentially. Now all these functions work quite well when you want to generate some random sample data for well known categories for categories that are generally used, because there we just have simple functions like phone number, license plate, and so on. But if you want to generate sample data that is very specific to your use case that is very specific to your particular niche that you're in, you cannot use the basic functions here. So what we do in that case is we can um, define our own providers. Now Faker is based on providers, we have um, different category providers, I don't know, like country providers, or something like phone number providers, and then we have different functions from those providers. And we can also create our own providers. So we're going to use a very simple example here of um, me having a YouTube channel, for example, I'm going to create a simple neural nine provider or a neural provider, if you want to call it that. And this is going to generate video categories. Now, of course, if we just want to generate video categories, a simple random dot choice would suffice because it's not more complicated than that. But you can think of it as a more complicated or you can think of a more complicated example as well. For example, let's say I don't want want to just generate a category, I want to generate a video title. And for this video title, I have a complex model, a complex algorithm, whatever, but I just want to call a function and then I get a video title based on for example, a category or based on a keyword. Um, that would be a more complex process. And I can still put that into a provider for faker and then just use a function for that. So how can we do that? Let me first get rid of this here. What we can do is first of all, we need to import from faker dot providers, we're going to import the uh, base provider. So base 
every time you see base in Python, you can think of it as something that has to be uh, inherited. So we're going to create a new class here. And this class is going to be the neural provider. And we're going to extend from the we're going to inherit from the base provider class. And all we're going to do here is we're going to create a function that is going to be video underscore category. And in fact, we're just going to use a simple random choice, as I mentioned, so we're going to import random here. And we're going to say return random dot choice. And here we're going to have a list of categories, I don't know, machine learning, um, uh, Vim, Linux, finance, whatever, some categories here. And this is now my provider, I can use this provider to generate to add this to a faker and to then generate some video categories. So I can just go ahead and say f, which is my faker instance, so f dot at underscore provider. And we're going to add the neural provider as a class, we don't add an instance, we add the class. And now all I need to do is I need to say f underscore uh, f dot video underscore category. And then it's going to generate a random category for me and it's always going to generate a new one. As you can see here. There you go. So this is a quite simple example. Again, you can think of this as a way more complicated process. But the goal of today's video is not to do an actual complex provider. But if you have, for example, even something like a neural network in the background, if you want, and this neural network using, uh, I don't know, NLP techniques, generate some sentences or some video titles, you can still have all of this here in the video category function or the video title function. And you can have multiple functions, right? If I do something like video underscore title. And now just for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna just return title here it doesn't really matter. But I can use all these functions now, if I um, add the provider to the faker. So I can also say video title now and this is always going to return the same value, obviously. Um, but yeah, you can see that this works. Now, what we can also do here is we can do the same thing or a similar thing in a more easy way in a less uh, object oriented way, maybe without creating classes, we can also import here the dynamic provider. And instead of now defining this class, uh, or actually, let's do it in addition to that class, we, we can do something like a programming underscore language underscore provider. And this is going to be a dynamic provider. And it's going to have um, two arguments here in the constructor. <clears throat> Sorry. And this argument is going to be the provider name first. So the provider name is going to be programming underscore language and then we have the elements and the elements are going to be a list of programming languages. So Python, Go, JavaScript, Ruby, C sharp, whatever. And now we can do the same thing, we can just say f dot add provider, programming language provider, and then print f dot programming language like that. So this also works, as you can see, if I run this over and over again, we get different programming languages, if it's simple like that, if you just have a list, and you want to do it like that. Uh, if you just want to do a random choice, basically, you can do it like this, if it's more complicated, you might want to go with a base provider, and some more complex functions. But that is how you professionally generate random sample data in Python using faker. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video. And